Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name's Father Andy, it's the beginning of Holy Week, so let's have a think about Palm Sunday. So here we are, guys, it's Holy Week, which is the week in the church where we remember the last time Jesus was alive before his crucifixion. And it's an amazing week with lots of events in it. And I want to start by telling you the story about the start of that week. The Sunday we've just had in the church is known as Palm Sunday. And it's a very special day because it sort of brings us almost to the end of our Lenten time, the time where we've been fasting and thinking uh, about giving things up and praying more. And we then enter into this last week where we start with the story of Jesus and we start to, to walk in his footsteps and think about the things that he did. It's a really important time for all of us as Christians. And what I want to do today is tell you that story again. Some of you may have had or the opportunity to make or receive a palm cross. And these are the palms that we remember on Palm Sunday. They, at the time, they weren't shaped into crosses like that. We've done that since. But actually, back in the day, um, people would have taken real palm leaves off trees and they would have waved them in the air and they waved them at Jesus as he entered into the city. We'll come to that story later. But first of all, I want you to think about a donkey. Now, when you think about a donkey, you probably don't think about an animal that a king or a queen or a royal person would ride upon. I grew up in a beautiful seaside town, and that town was called Scarborough. Scarborough is in uh, the north of England, in North Yorkshire. It's a really lovely place. And on the beach in Scarborough, like in so many other seaside towns in our country, you could, in the summer at least, um, have a ride on a donkey. Donkeys uh, are little really. They're not big animals, but they are very strong. And they use, you know, these donkeys to give children rides up and down the beach all day long. Not many kings and queens would come and ride on a donkey. A king or a queen, you might imagine, would arrive on a horse, certainly in the days before cars uh, were invented, which is when we're thinking about. Uh, people would have uh, come on a horse if they were powerful and important, and you would know that horses make you higher off the ground. They carry you uh, a great deal quicker, of course. Much more useful if you're fighting people, if you're a warrior as well. So why are we thinking about donkeys today? Well, obviously, uh, the story of Palm Sunday has something to do with it. So let's have a think about that story. And our story begins uh, in the city of Jerusalem. In fact, it kind of doesn't, because it also begins way back in the Old Testament, long before Jesus was around. Now, there's a lot of books in the Old Testament written by people that we call prophets. And prophets were people who used to hear from God. And then they would tell the people what God was saying and what he was going to do. Not quite predicting the future, if you like, but they would make um, clear the plans that God had for his people. And there's a prophet in the Old Testament called Zechariah. And Zechariah prophesied or told the people that God would send their rescuer, their redeemer, their king on a donkey. And not just a donkey, a baby one, a colt, as it's sometimes referred to. And Zechariah put this in his book way before Jesus was around to remind the people that God's chosen one wasn't necessarily going to be so mighty and important, but he would be humble and he would be kind and he wouldn't think he was more important than he was. And that came a long time before Jesus was actually around. And then we jump forward to our story of Palm Sunday where we see Jesus, who has been uh, working in the area for about three years. He's been teaching people, he's been preaching about what the kingdom of God is like, and he's been healing people and helping people. But while he's been doing all that stuff, because that, all that stuff sounds really wonderful, doesn't it? But actually what he's been doing is also upsetting people. And the people he's been upsetting are the people who are in charge. They're the religious leaders of the place. And the religious leaders don't like what Jesus is doing because he's saying things which seem to be different to what the religious people wanted to teach. He's claiming, for example, to be God, which you weren't allowed to do. He's saying that he was God, 
He's also claiming uh, to do things um, and say it's okay to do things on the Sabbath, for example, which is a day of rest. You were supposed to rest on, on days like that. But Jesus healed people on the Sabbath. And he said it was more important to bring someone to healing than it was just to have a religious practice. He did a lot of things. And so by the time he gets to Jerusalem, after three years of doing this stuff, people are either really delighted that he's there or they're quite upset with him and they want to hurt him. And that is where we get to the beginning of our Palm Sunday story. Lots had happened before it even began. So to help us with this story, I want you to follow along and make some noises and do some actions when I say certain words. So the first word that I want you to do an action on when you hear it is the word donkey. And it's very simple. When you hear the word donkey in the story, I want you to make your hands into ears and go. Our next word is Jesus. Whenever I say Jesus, I want you to punch the air and shout Jesus' name like this. Jesus! So when I say the word cheer, I want you to cheer. That's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to put your hands in the air and make a really big cheering noise. So the last word I'm going to give you is the word Hosanna. Whenever I say the word Hosanna, I want you to take a palm cross or something that you can make into a shape of a cross and just shout Hosanna. It's really easy. All you've got to do is repeat after me. Jesus said to his friends, we are going to have a parade and I need a donkey. I want two of you to go to the village. There you will find a young donkey called a colt tied up. Untie him and bring him back here. If anyone stops you, just say that your master needs this donkey and he will send it back when he has finished with it. So the two disciples went off, found the donkey and took it back to Jesus. They put their coats on the donkey's back and Jesus climbed onto it. He started riding the donkey into the city and the people who had been talking about him went ahead of him. They started cheering and shouting, Hosanna! Lots more people heard the noise and they came to see what it was all about. They started putting their cloaks down on the ground for the donkey to walk on. Then someone thought they needed a flag, so they took a branch off one of the many palm trees and started waving it around, cheering, Hosanna, Hosanna, look, it's Jesus. God bless him, Hosanna. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. In the end, the whole city was buzzing about the parade and the sight of Jesus on a donkey. Here, there were some people who weren't joining in and cheering. Some people weren't shouting, Hosanna. They were jealous of Jesus and they told him off for making such a big fuss. They wanted Jesus to stop the people cheering. But Jesus said to them, if the people kept quiet, the stones will start shouting instead. Wow, brilliant everyone. I hope you enjoyed all those actions. I hope you made lots of noise. We're going to stop that now. So I'm going to say some more of those words again, but you don't need to do the actions anymore. You might want to give the grown-ups in the room a bit of a rest. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. But why are we telling it? Well, as I said earlier, that this Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Holy Week, the last week of Jesus' life before his crucifixion. It marks a time where the chosen one of God, God's special person, comes back to his people, to the holy city of Jerusalem, and he arrives as their king. And when people are shouting Hosanna, what they mean is, save us. The word Hosanna means, save us. So every time we're shouting Hosanna, we're shouting, Lord, save us. So the people recognised what Jesus was doing, and they recognised it because of those prophets that I told you about earlier. They knew that the prophets had told that the King of Jerusalem, God's chosen one, the Messiah, is the word we sometimes use, would come on a donkey 
for his people. Lord save us. But what they didn't imagine was that a week later that same Lord would be dead because on the Friday he would have been killed and he would have been strung up on a cross which is why we have our crosses. It's why we remember Jesus this way. They wouldn't have predicted he would have had an end so miserable and so unking-like. Kings were not crucified. And yet, a week later, on the next Sunday, Jesus was alive again. Death could not hold him. He had conquered the grave. He had turned away the forces of darkness. By dying on the cross, Jesus would take away all the things that separate us from God, including death. He defeats it. And the following week, he has risen and there's victory and we can have that life today. We'll be thinking more about that later this week. But for today, let's remember Palm Sunday and Jesus being a king. Jesus riding into Jerusalem on that donkey. It's an amazing story. So during our videos, I've been encouraging you to pray each day, sing, dance and say thanks every day. We will pray at the end of this video and we'll think of things we can say thank you to God for as well. But what I'd like to do now is much like the people who were uh, welcoming Jesus into the city uh, with their songs and their cheering, I want us to sing a really happy song today. So my friend uh, Reverend Alex has uh, recorded a special song for us to join in with. Many of you know it, it's called My Lighthouse and it is about the love and the light of God shining through us, shining in us, and I want you to join in with it today. So it's an opportunity to sing and dance. Hi guys, we're uh, gonna sing a song called My Lighthouse now. There's some actions. Timmy and Lydia are gonna do the actions. So here we go. It starts with In My Wrestling. Gonna do some wrestling. In my wrestling, in my house, in my baby. Stop. 
to my friend Reverend Alex for leading us in that lovely, lovely song, that chance to worship God together, to sing and to dance. And that's what I want to give thanks for today. Do you remember our thankfulness jar? Well, I've got my palm cross also in that jar because I'm so thankful that Jesus is the King and he's my King and so I'm giving thanks for him today. But I'm also thankful for my friend Reverend Alex and his singing ability and the fact that he's able to, to share that with us. So thank you, Alex. You go in the thankfulness jar too. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus to be our saviour and to be our king. Fully God and fully man. He took all of the things that separate us from you to the cross and he defeated them. He even defeated death. And we give you thanks. We pray that as we walk this Holy Week with you, you would show us just how much we are forgiven and how much you love us. Help us to think and to pray each day that we might be closer to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.